Today on VRS TV, we're going to go over phosphate's role in reef aquaria, the best testing methods, and how to keep your levels down. Phosphate is a concern to reefers for two primary reasons, algae growth and coral growth. All forms of algae require phosphate to grow, and for some, low levels can even be a limiting factor, meaning if you keep the levels low enough, it's unlikely that you're going to encounter problems with algaes like hair algae, and you may even be able to clean your glass less frequently. Phosphate can also slow down coralline algae and coral growth by binding to the surface of the coral skeleton and making it harder for the coral to lay down additional calcium carbonate skeletal structure, which will slow down coral growth. This begins to happen at very low levels, but at higher levels, it can actually slow down coral growth as much as 50% or more. This is important because many reefers go to extraordinary lengths to get extra coral growth, and this could all be wasted if you're ignoring your phosphate levels. Sadly, most aquarium phosphate test kits aren't that great. Some are widely inaccurate, and the rest required you to read a shade of blue that's almost impossible. For that reason, I found testing phosphate in my own aquarium was almost a waste of time. I paid closer attention to the tank itself and evaluated the phosphate levels by things like how often I needed to clean the glass and other algae growth. It's really all changed now with the HANA phosphate checker. This is an affordable and accurate way to now measure the amount of phosphate that's in your aquarium. It has a digital readout, and uh, let's be frank, everybody would prefer a digital readout rather than trying to match shades of blue. I really feel like this is something that almost every aquarius should own. There are a variety of ways to maintain low levels of phosphate. The best one will be to watch how much you add to begin with. Fish foods are the primary source of phosphate introduction in the aquarium, so it's going to be critical that you watch how much and what you feed. If you feed things like frozen foods, you're going to want to thaw and thoroughly rinse them before adding them to the tank. If you use pellet or flake food, you may want to read the ingredient list and make sure it doesn't have anything that is undesirable. I personally avoid foods that add polyphosphates as a preservative because there are choices like the Elos brand of fish foods that choose not to use polyphosphates. Top off water is also a major source of phosphate for some reefers because their home's water supply is high in phosphates. This can be solved by purchasing reverse osmosis deionized water at your local fish store, or you can install your own RODI system in your home. It only takes a few minutes and over the last few years they've become very affordable. If you're serious about maintaining a long-term reef tank, it's almost a no-brainer to install an RODI system in your own home for easy use. A good maintenance schedule is always going to be important in maintaining low nutrient levels. Things like changing out your filter socks frequently will help substantially by removing the excess food and fish waste before it has a chance to break down and release these nutrients. A good water change schedule is of course helpful. The backbone of many nutrient removal systems in the aquarium is really going to be the protein skimmer. Getting the best one you can, maintaining it properly and keeping it clean is really going to be one of the best ways to remove much of the waste before it has a chance to break down and be released into the aquarium. If you're looking to maintain ultra low levels of phosphate to increase coral growth and inhibit algae growth, GFO is really going to be your best bet. It works by binding the phosphate to the surface of the media. So when you throw out the media, the phosphate goes with it. This is also going to be really important if you're looking to get the phosphate levels down quickly because you're in the middle of a major algae outbreak. GFO is probably the most popular and widely used phosphate reduction product. The last method of phosphate control we'd like to mention is bacteria. This is typically done by finding a carbon source and adding it to the tank. Uh, it's commonly done with vodka as a liquid, and more recently with bio pellets as a solid carbon dosing form. This works extremely well at removing not only phosphates, but nitrates as well. The only thing is there's a lot of variables to this system, and it's heavily dependent on the population of bacteria itself. This makes it more suitable for an experienced reefer. If you're looking for something a little more simple and you're a newer reefer, GFO is still probably going to be your best bet at removing phosphate. 
If you are interested in being notified when we make new additions to BRS TV, you can sign up for our newsletter found on almost every product page. You can also log into your account and hit the Newsletter Subscriptions tab.